What's up guys, welcome to CSM Sundays, episode 13. We are so excited for you to be joining us on today's episode. We've got a great episode planned and we are starting our new series in the Psalms. In the Psalms, like with music, there are lots of different genres and you know what it's like. There are some songs you listen to and it just makes you happy. And there are some songs that when you're sad, it's almost like the person singing the song is singing your life story. You're like, man, I could have written those words because they just get it. Or you see someone that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And in the Psalms, there's happy, there's sad, there's praising God, there's difficult times. And all you have to do is turn on the news, look at what's happening in the world right now, and it's not all sunshine and roses. I know that in these times of hurt and difficulty, that it can, it can be hard to know what to do, what to say, what to feel, and that's one of the reasons why I love the Psalms. The, the Psalms really speak to the heart. A lot of the Psalms are written from places of tragedy, from places of pain, from places of difficulty. And so as we read those Psalms, we're reminded of the truth of who God is and how we should respond in these difficult moments. So I hope you guys are excited. Every week you're gonna get a teaching video from us. You're also gonna get discussion questions because we wanna challenge you to start your own small group. Whether it's with your already existing student group or maybe you wanna grab a group of friends, we want you to start a small group together to be studying God's word throughout the summer. Now that Lancaster's moving to yellow, we can get together in smaller groups. So we wanna encourage you, invite some people over to your house and study God's word together. You're also gonna be getting a reading plan each week. We're gonna challenge you to read five Psalms each week for the next eight weeks. You're not gonna read all 150 Psalms, although you can if you want, but we're gonna challenge you just five Psalms a week as you dig into that this summer. So check out our reading plans. We're also gonna be posting some memory verses on our social media, so stay tuned for that. So we hope that you guys are excited as we start our Psalms series. Well, as we get into things in this week's episode, we're gonna hand it over to Tyler for some worship. Hey CSM, we're going to spend another time just singing together. And this next song is one of my favorites just because of the winter retreat this past year. It's Run to the Father. So if you want to pull it up, pull up the lyrics and sing along, that would be great. I just love picturing that room of us all singing this together and crying out that my heart has found a surgeon, my heart has found a friend in Jesus. There's no reason to hide anymore. There's no reason to wait, Lord. So let's sing this together. Let's sing these words like we did when we were on the retreat. I've carried a burden too long on my own I wasn't created to bury it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go I see it now I'm laying it down and I know that I Run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. saw my condition had a plan from the start your son for redemption the price for my heart and I don't have a context for that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into 
to grace. I'm done with the hiding, reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again. been in your sight long before my first breath running into your arms is running to life from death and I feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out just as I am, you pull me in, and I know I need you now. So I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again. Oh, I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. All right, guys, we are jumping into our summer psalm series playlist. Very excited as it's hot out and it is summertime. You need to have that summer playlist. And for us, we are teaching through the book of Psalms and it is a great playlist for you this whole summer. And I'm very excited for this because we're gonna have lots of different teachers. They get to speak into your life and pour into you and you'll get to see more than just my face. So I'm very excited for that. We are jumping into chapter one of the book of Psalms today but before we do that i want to give a little overview or background on the book of psalms as a whole when i ask you the question what do you know about the psalms maybe you know that david wrote them well you'd be mostly correct most of them are written by david but not all of them there's a collection of authors that wrote the book of psalms and some of them even are unknown like our first chapter that we're going to be studying is unknown we're not sure who wrote it it doesn't change the fact that it is inerrant which means that it has no error it's without error it is still god breathed and it is still uh holy and divine every word of it is we're just not sure who who wrote the pen to the paper and but it is god's word and it is god breathed so there's no question on that end in addition maybe you think that the psalms is just a big song book that it's a, a big hymnal a big hymn book but actually it is a collection of poems and sonnets and prayers in addition to, to hymns as well and songs of praise. And so there's a lot of different things that, comp that make up uh, the book of Psalms. You might also think that it is just a random collection of random things all put together and scrambled together. It seems like that sometimes, but if you look closely, it's actually very well organized into five separate sections. And so we'll work through these different sections and you'll hear parts from each one. Uh, but this first one is actually kind of an outlier. The first two chapters are an outlier and they set the stage for the rest of the book of Psalms. And so if you want more information, if you want to know more about the background of Psalms or anything like that, I'm putting a link to the Bible Project. They make these great YouTube videos. Hit the link in the description. Watch the YouTube video. They lay it out for you in like eight minutes. So it's a great resource for you if you're interested in learning about the, the overall book of Psalms. So that's for you guys. I'll leave that there. But now jumping into the first chapter, if you, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to Psalm chapter one. I want to hear from some students as they read Psalm chapter one for us. 
Psalms chapter 1. How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of sinners, or join a group of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not survive the judgment, and sinners will not be in the community of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path, path of the wicked leads to destruction. Psalm chapter 1. We're going to look at the first two verses. That's all we're going to break down this morning, and, and that is all we're going to work through, okay? Psalm chapter 1, starting in verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits at the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. We'll pause right there. There's a lot of wisdom in, this, in these two verses. This is life-changing and potentially could keep you out of a lot of trouble and having a difficult uh, part of your life that you don't even know about yet. I want to have a blessed life. Then look at the first verse. It says, blessed is the man. How do, you, how do you achieve this blessed life? How do you achieve this fulfilled life? Well, here's three steps, three things to avoid to, to keep you from falling into three traps, okay? If you wanna give up your happiness and you wanna give up a blessed life, here are three traps that people tend to fall into that can lead to a sinful life. Step one, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. I wanna look at three parts of that. And I'll have them underlined. It says, who walks, counsel, and wicked. Those are the three things I want us to see. Walks, counsel, and wicked. It's almost like the first step. Like you're, you're moving along, you're walking down the street and you know, minding your own business and then you receive this counsel, this sort of, these words or these wisdom that, that's given to you and then you have the choice of what you do with that. And so you're walking and then you receive this counsel and we find out this counsel is from someone who is wicked or a wicked counsel and so it's not something to be trusted, not something to listen to, but you have a choice still, right? We're kind of faced with that problem. Second step, it continues. It says, nor stands in the way of sinners. Stands, way, sinners. Those three are underlined. We're no longer moving, we're no longer walking. Now we're stopped, we're paused, we're standing here. And we're deciding to stand and, and kind of live in this and dwell in this, and it's the way of the sinners. You're actually committing a sin. Now you've taken that counsel, and you're stopping what you're doing, and you're starting to live in sin. And maybe this is just your start, where it's like an occasional part of your life, something that happens, or something you do that that is a continual sin that you're just kind of standing in, just kind of living in. Not really moving, not really going forward or backward, just an occasional sin that goes against God. And now we see the third trap, the third step, third level here. It says, nor sits at the seat of scoffers. I am seated, I am in a chair, I am sitting at the, at the table with the scoffers. I'm not going anywhere, I'm not moving anymore. Now this is life. This is where I'm dwelling. And maybe for you, you're dwelling in, in your sin. You're sitting with the scoffers. And if that's you, then I want to encourage you, man, how do you break that? How do you get out of that? This isn't what we're designed to live. This isn't how a blessed life is going to happen. But instead, this is one of the traps that we can fall into. How do you break the trap of sitting in your sin of dwelling in it of sticking in this and sometimes it can be really hard to get out it can be something that you're stuck in and you're not able you feel like you're not able to move you're not able to get out of it how do you get out of that sin let's see verse 2 tells us how to get out of the chair but his delight is in the law of the lord how do you get out of the chair how do you break the hold that the chair has on you it's through Delighting in God's word. It's through breaking the mold, getting out of it, is by delighting in God's word. And so how do we stand up again? How do we get out of this, this chair, this rut that we're in when it comes to our sin and being stuck in it? Look at the second part of verse two. It says, and on his law, he meditates day and night. 
Man, this is a continual life that you have to choose. This is a daily practice that you have to have be a part of your life. If you don't wanna stop walking, if you don't even wanna stand in sin, if you definitely don't want to sit in your sin, man, you gotta start getting into God's word, start reading what it has to say and start applying it to your life and taking it to heart. And, and when you find joy in God's word, you will have an abundantly blessed life. And I'm not just saying money or, or extreme happiness or really good fortune, nothing like that. You will have fulfillment that comes only from your relationship with God. And the only way you can know of what that is is by, by living that out, by following his steps that he has written for you in his word. And so that's my little nugget of wisdom for you this morning or whenever you're watching it. Abide in God's word, dwell in God's word, live in God's word. Don't stop walking, don't stand, don't sit in your sin, but start breaking it now. And that starts with you and that's your decision each day to grow in your walk with God. That's all I got for you guys this morning. We're gonna keep working through this video and get to see some of our seniors, get to see a lot of other things coming up. I'm excited for you guys. I hope that you can continue to grow and listen to this summer playlist all summer long. So yeah. I wanna take a little bit of time to just talk to our seniors for a second. Seniors, I know that this year did not end at all the way you would have expected and especially not the way you would have hoped. But that doesn't make the significance and importance of your achievement any less. You guys graduated high school, congratulations. And that's a huge achievement and should be celebrated and I hope that you're finding ways to celebrate that. We want to celebrate you and we're so thankful for all of you seniors who sent in videos telling us about the way that God has been working in their lives. This next video that you're going to watch is going to be shown in our main service and while we can't hear from all of our seniors, we're going to hopefully release a longer video where you'll get to hear from more of them, so stay tuned for that. But here are some of our CSM seniors as we celebrate them, we celebrate all of our seniors as you guys graduate, so let's hear from them. Next year, I plan on moving to the Northeast of England to be a missionary there for a year. My plans for next year are to attend Word of Life Bible Institute uh, and their one-year program. Afterwards, I will attend Lancaster Bible College where I'll come back home and, uh, and I will pursue a degree in finance. My plans for next year are to attend Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology for metal fabrication and welding. In the fall, I will be attending Penn College of Technology for baking and pastry arts. Next year, I plan to go to Seton Hill University for their accelerated physician assistant program. I will be continuing my education at Liberty University where I will be majoring in biomedical sciences to one day pursue a career in the medical field. In the fall, I'll be attending Grove City College for a degree in mechanical engineering. I will be attending Charleston Southern University in the fall. Next year, I will be attending Indiana Wesleyan University to study exercise science and athletic training. And next fall, I will be attending Cedarville University to major in international studies. Next year, I am going to Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas to study communication sciences and disorders, and then hopefully going on to grad school to become a speech language pathologist. And my plans for next year are a bit up in the air. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping to further my education, uh, go to college to study both musical theater and business, possibly also education, you know? My plans for the next couple years include attending Millersburg University, I'll be studying chemistry, and eventually hoping to get my doctorate in chemistry. This fall, I will be attending Lancaster Bible College. Next year, I'm planning on taking a gap year through World Race with Adventures in Mission. Lord willing, I'm going to be going to Romania, uh, South Asia and Costa Rica. I'm going to PIA for airplane maintenance and avionics. I will be attending Liberty University in the fall for business. I will be attending Thaddeus Stevens in the fall and I will be going there for architectural technology. I'm going to Liberty University in the fall. I'm attending Liberty and majoring in English secondary education. In the fall, I will be attending the Word of Life Bible Institute for a year. I would say the number one thing CSM has really helped me grow upon and learn is that God's plan is the best plan for us and that we need to trust in His will. I'm just so thankful for four years at CSM and I'm hoping to carry all the values 
uh, CSM has taught me and to my years of college. Through CSM, I have been able to um, grow close with um, the girls in my student group. Um, and I've also been able to learn so much about myself um, through missions trips. We were just able to see how God is working and how he worked through us. Um, and it was an amazing experience. I really appreciate the leadership. I'm really thankful for them. Um, as soon as I got there, I got connected with those guys and I, they've pretty much been good friends and helped for me since day one. Really cool people, which I'll stay in contact with my entire life. And it's a cool way God has worked in my life and continues to work with, with Calvary and kids to come. I think it's really cool. Thank you, Calvary. Um, thank you for the years that you've given me, years of fun, years of encouragement. Um, a safe place that I can turn to and some great leaders that I will always look up to. We've got a fun afternoon planned. We are going to be talking a little bit about our Psalm series coming up. What's up, Alex? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I now have a stash comb. Wow. 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 Oh. Now I play chess on the side, um, but my current hobby has been uh, fishing. Oh, uh, everybody needs a net guy. <laughs> you get a net. My net guy. Net. <laughs> That's hilarious. What's up? I was rip sticking on Sunday and I was going down a hill and I crashed. Yo, so I was rip sticking on my rip stick. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Oh, you got me so good. Wow. <laughs> Dude, you gotta watch out. These things are dangerous. Oh just... my goodness. That's really that... ridiculous. That was unbelievable. Wear a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like reggae a lot. Yeah, like, awesome. it's just a little thing that makes me just a little more happy because it's yeah. just, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> just stay with the, with with god right now because it's very easy to drift away when you aren't able to go to church um i'm natalie listen to the radio a lot so i like like pop rocks it's, it's like older music i don't know if any of my student groups in here right now we're going to fox meadows later first one the the first chapter of psalms is one that's a little bit unknown and so um that'll be the one we're diving into first Look at your best friend. Everything is content, worth it. One last thing to make you aware of, I would personally like to invite you middle school students to a middle school connection event that we're gonna be doing over Zoom on June 12th, which is this coming Friday. You'll get an email with a link to the Zoom meeting. We've done them before, this is kind of what they look like. We've done some different cahoots and different games that we'll play during it. You'll get an email that will tell you exactly what to expect. But our goal is to welcome the new sixth grade students into CSM ministry. And I know right now is probably the craziest time to welcome new faces, but it's just an opportunity for you guys to see each other, to meet each other. And I am looking forward to seeing all of your bright and smiling faces. Middle school connection event for sixth grade, rising seventh grade, and then our current seventh and eighth graders. I look forward to seeing you guys this Friday. With all that being said, that is all the content we have for you this week. Keep working, keep growing in your walk with God. We love you. We'll see you next time. Peace.